Welcome to a brief look at some of the exciting work going on in our Monash Ammonia project and how our sustainable approach to producing ammonia actually works. Our interest is in capturing the massive potential that Australia has to generate renewables and to turn them into something that is readily transported by ship and pipeline to centres of population. Ammonia has emerged as an ideal carrier of this energy. So our work is focused on the direct transformation of nitrogen from the air around us into liquid ammonia using nothing else other than water and renewable energy. Ammonia is the main source of fertilizers today, but these are made from fossil fuels, accounting for a significant fraction of greenhouse gas emissions. Through our work, we hope to turn fertilizers genuinely sustainable. But as well as this, ammonia is seen as a carrier of hydrogen energy or for direct use in ammonia burning engines. So how do we do this? Let me hand over to my co-lead in this work, Sasha Simonov, to explain. Our process is very similar to what happens in a water electrolyzer to produce hydrogen. The difference being that we use electrolytes that are familiar in the lithium battery world. When current is applied across an electrolytic cell containing such electrolytes and also dissolved nitrogen gas, a compound called lithium nitride is formed at the cathode surface. The electrolyte should also contain a carrier of the hydrogen ions or protons. In a recent paper we published in the Science magazine, we have shown that phosphonium salts can act as such proton carrier to produce ammonia in a highly efficient manner. The phosphonium cycles between the two electrodes, delivering its proton at the cathode and being replenished with the fresh proton at the anode, creating a continuous process that we have run for as much as four days. I'll hand over to Dr. Brian Suranto to show you what these phosphonium salts can do. The phosphonium salt we use is actually a liquid, often referred to as an ionic liquid. The phosphonium cation has a well-known tendency to act as an acid. In other words, it can give up a proton or two. It is a very weak acid, and that is probably what we need here so that we don't have too many other set reactions going on. Once the proton has detached, the neutral molecule formed is called an elite and has a double bond between the carbon and the phosphorus atoms. And this is what gives it a very special property. One of our senior research fellows, Dr. Karina Matisek, will explain how this helps to generate ammonia in a bit more detail. At the molecular level, positively charged proton carrier is initially attracted to the negative working electrode. The electrode surface is covered with the highly reactive lithium nitride. When it reaches to the surface, the proton carrier molecule releases one of its protons to the lithium nitride, in the process becoming what is known as an elite compound. The elite, now neutral, diffuses away, clearing the surface for a second proton carrier to deliver its proton. A third step like this finally produces a fully formed ammonia molecule which diffuses away from the electrode. The positively charged lithium ions remain near the electrode, ready to form more lithium nitride. And now I will hand over to a Huang Long, who will show you how to do this in the lab. So here we are in an argon fuel glow box. We don't want to handle our cell in the air because that can introduce nasty contaminants. We, our experiments are carried out in the cell such as this, um, with a fixed quantity of nitrogen gas and electrolyte. Here is the couple working electrode with the cylindrical outer electrode is an anode. This is the core reference electrode, which allow us to monitor what is happening on the surface of the couple electrode. Fill up the cell with the electrolyte And then we bring outside the glow box, introduce the nitrogen gas as much as 20 atmospheres of pressure. So we will start experiment. We will run this for three days. Afterward, it's, it's time to measure how much ammonia has been formed. In this lab, we have two main methods of quantifying ammonia. The first one involves the generation of a highly colored compound. 
This compound can be easily read by a spectrometer such as this one. We have developed a particularly careful variant on this technique called the method of standard additions. Now, this requires a generation of a whole suite of standard solutions in order to test one sample. This can be quite labour intensive and can unfortunately generate a whole heap of plastic waste. The other method that we use is NMR analysis. Now this technique is particularly exciting because we are able to measure the signal coming directly off the ammonia molecule itself. If we are particularly excited by a recent result, what we can do is use a slightly heavier gas called N15 nitrogen. And what this does is it can produce a completely different signal to the normal N14 gas. Now, while the N15 gas is much more expensive, it's also very valuable because what it does is it makes us completely sure that the nitrogen in the final ammonia product is indeed the result of the gas source that we are pumping in. So we hope you've enjoyed this quick run through of our ammonia process. If you'd like to keep in touch, you could follow us on Twitter or on our website.